Welcome to the Too Posh Podcast. I am Gabrielle. I am a former New York Mafia princess, originally from Austria. I am the mother of three and the owner of Too Posh Boutique. And here with my beautiful co-host, Marcella, my daughter. Hello, I'm Marcella. I'm a dancer, choreographer, model, and designer for Too Posh. And I say whatever the f*** I want. Hi, my name is Cruz. I am a stylist. I also own the Society Salon in the design district and I am a short little Mexican with a big personality. I am Polly. <laughs> I am a certified sexual health consultant and educator, former professional dominatrix, currently working at the largest adult novelty store in the Texas Panhandle. What will they say next? Welcome to the Two Posh Podcast. Welcome with our guest today, Trey Swafford. How excited are we to finally get you on the show? I'm so excited. <laughs> I mean, this is so such a long time coming. We talked about it. Yeah, over a year ago. I think. Yeah, over a year ago. I sent you guys, you girls, uh, Valentine's last That's year. That's right. Aww, we should have. What yes, a sweet guy. Is so <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's been over a year we've been talking about this. Yeah, and so now we have you on. Very Here I am. excited. Uh, Trey Swarford is has a crazy story, guys. I mean, he is. You know, everyone has a life story, and uh, we always say if you share it, you can help other people. And some things are super, super crazy. And the thing that I personally know about you and I cannot get over is that you, I want to just jump right into it, so <laughs> that you got shot. I did, yes. And but this is now a second show I that saw we the have bullet. had um, right here. that Ooh. people get shot in Dallas. <laughs> That's like so, so crazy to mm -hmm. me. But could you tell us how that happened? How what led up to it? Tell us the the whole story because I, when Marcella told me that happened to you, I couldn't. I'm I'm just. I mean, I, it took me a while to really kind of, you know, understand everything that happened, and I still don't know if I do. But how, when did that happen? What were you doing? It was. Well, what's when? I got a tattoo. The date is it three years ago or two years ago? One of these. Oh, it's a week. Nineteen. Nineteen. So that was the twenty. Wow. It was my birthday. It was on my birthday. My 33rd birthday, I'm 35, so... When's your birthday? November 16th, so I'll put the 17th, because it was like at 1, 1 a.m., but really, we went out for my birthday. So, November 17th, 2019. 2019. What? Yeah. Wow, that this was not so too recent. long ago. I know, right? So, you went out for your birthday. I have no idea about this story, so talk to me, man. Yeah, tell okay. us. Um, well, I just moved and bought a house in uh, Kessler Park, which okay. is, you know, my... That's my, my dream neighborhood. That's yeah. my hood. That's my hood. That's clip. That's Oak my clip. hood. You know it. My parents or my grandparents used to live out there, so it was always my kind of dream neighborhood. But I just bought my house, and I haven't even moved in yet. But I had the keys, and it was my birthday, and I, I hadn't really gone out in probably two years. And uh, I believe that this, uh, my friend Andy's wife, Rachel, she's my friend as well. She uh, bought these tickets for us to go to this Ryan Bingham concert. I don't even, I don't, I know one song he did, uh -huh. but we went and it was at the Southside Ballroom and I, rem I remember we went and then like a bunch of my friends were going. It was for your birthday. For my birthday, my 33rd birthday. Okay. It was on my birthday. November 16th is when we were going out. So that's my birthday. Um, so this is, you know, 930 at the concert and I remember at the concert was just kind Scorpio. of. Scorpio. Scorpio all the way. <laughs> um, I'm just getting into that by the way. But uh, anyways, the, the concert was kind of, no, no offense, Ryan Bingham, it was kind of whack. And, um, you know, some, some of my friends, like, left to go to clubs and all that. And I just really don't do that anymore because I used to do it so much. And I don't like seeing people that used to know, like, the old me. I really don't like the club scene. Um, so I just didn't want to go. So a couple of my friends, you know, just left. And then um, I thought we were all going back to my house because, you know, I really only had a couch and a TV at the time, I guess. Other people wanted to go out. It's only 10 o'clock. Anyways, I'm telling, making this story longer than it needs to be, but uh, me and my friend, I just remember me and my friend Kyle, who's part of Gallery Defy, um, we went back to my house, we were just smoking a blunt, if that's okay to say on here. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, you know, 12 o'clock, and I was like, what the, f you know, my, or maybe not even 12 o'clock, it was like 11. And um, I was just like, I'm gonna do, you know, this is whack on my birthday, I'm doing this. But then another guy had called me, because he knew it was my birthday, and uh, that other guy was my friend Tanson. Actually, he was at, he was at our dinner earlier, sorry. We had dinner, and then we went to Ryan Bingham. Uh -huh. He was there, but he didn't have the tickets to go to Ryan Bingham because he probably thought it was going to be whack. Yeah. He was right. Um, anyway, <laughs> so he was like, come over to um, Paradiso or what, you know, it's in the Bishop Arts right by me. He's like, all these fine-ass girls are here. So 
So of course, I'm like, <laughs> love that place. By the way, yeah, it's so nice, right? Very dog friendly. If you ever want to find a beautiful girl, go Very to dog. Paradise. Really? Oh yeah, Dish of Parts. Okay. Coming up. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. They have a great Bronzino. There you go. Ooh, I don't know what that is, but a they fish. Have, it's a fish. Okay. Oh. It's like real fancy, you know. I always go to the fancy places. You ladies love that. I love. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I went out there and met up with him. I got just you know got an Uber there, and or actually no, my friend Kyle drove me there, dropped me off. But I just remember walking in by myself and. Seeing him with these girls that I've, you know, I don't think I knew anyone there. It was my birthday, so I was kind of splitting into it. And were they beautiful? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably so. I yeah. Def- I mean, yeah, there was some whatever. Yeah. Um, But I hadn't been down forever, so it's kind of weird. Because I'd been living in my parents for like a year and a half before this. Just saving money, waiting for us to sell our company. Okay. So I could buy my house. Okay. And so I really hadn't been out. So I really, you know, everything was kind of weird to me. Especially since how much I used to go out, Marcelo, and it was that. But, um... So, you know, I guess we stayed there till not even till two. We left before that. And we were taking some girls home that lived in Deep Ellum for mm-hmm. some reason. It's like all the way over there and then coming all the way back. Are you driving? I'm not driving. Okay. We're getting into my friend Tanson, who I grew up with, his like new Jeep, which is kind of kind of a little bitch car. No no offense. But that's kinda of, <laughs> that, that'll lead that'll lead into what I'm gonna say next. So my, my theory at least of what happened. So we took these, I guess, two females. I forgot your names, I don't know which ones you were. But we took you home to uh, um, Deep Ellum. Just, I think that we just dropped them off. And then we went from Deep Ellum back to my, you know, coming back to my house in, in Kessler Park. So, um, you know, at the time, it seemed like, from my memory, I just remember, like, there's nobody really around us. When we're, ex- we're exiting my exit to go to my house, which is Sylvan. Sylvan and uh, 30, right there. You're going on, like, you know, get over the bridge, and then you're exiting Sylvan. It's the first exit uh, past downtown in Trinity Groves area. or whatever that, What's that park called? Whatever. You pass over the bridge, and then there's, you exit Sylvan 30. So as we're exiting, I, I swear, just before that, I'm thinking, man, this is like the first time I've been out in Dallas, not my birthday, that I'm not even drunk, and like I haven't done drugs. You know, like I'm going home before 2 o'clock, or maybe it's like right at, it was right around 2 o'clock. Um, but either way, it was, you know, still kind of dead out, because people aren't really leaving the bars yet. Um, but I just remember we were exiting, and then this, we got hit from a car. And it was a, not like a regular hit, like it was like a, you know, kind of trying to drive us off the road hit. What? Like, they like hit our car, and they kind of, like, were, like... Like, in, in the back? Um, Like, from the side, because okay. we were exit As we were side, exiting... Like, trying to, like, okay. yeah. sweep you off it's the It's kind of like they're, they're behind us, and they came around, and from the from the side, they kind of hit us. But, I mean, I really didn't notice them until that happened. But I remember it happened, and I, like, when it was going on, I had enough time to, like, turn and see, the you know, the guy in the passenger seat. Who, like, what, what did he look like? Like, uh, young, like... Pfft, I don't know. It could be like 14 years old, maybe. Wow. Oh, 14. Wow. Like 14 to 17 tops. Like he had no facial, you know, those kind of, he was like half black, half Puerto Rican probably. Okay. He had an afro and he was wearing like a, I want to say it was a wife beater or something. I just remember because it's cold. It's November. Okay. And like I just, my memory, I can see that guy's face. Okay. Trust me. And um, he was just a little bitch. So like I think what happened was he saw, he kind of was like looking at us and I threw my hands up and I think that. From what the cops say, and this is just goes into my theory later, it's kind of like they said it was a gang initiation type thing they're doing. Yeah. Where, like, that, you know, we were in a brand new girl's Jeep, or it's a guy's Jeep, no offense, Tanzan, but anyone who drives a Jeep Cherokee or whatever, it kind of looks like a girl's car. So, like, he was pushing us off. He might probably thought we were other girls because we had just dropped girls off and they said that they'd, you know, maybe followed us from Deep Ellum, like, to back oh to my, my house. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, and I think they were, in a, they were in a stolen car, I believe, because, I mean, how do these little 13, 15, I mean, it seriously seemed like they were like 15 to 16 tops. No way they were past that. Um, and it was two guys. Well, anyways, they kind of rolled, you know, were hitting us in my kind of, kind of seemed like they were like, not really hit us, but like rolled up against us almost. Kind of like was a push. It wasn't like a hard hit. But I just remember like my, ta- my friend Tanson like kind of hit the brakes and they, uh, for them to go ahead or like whatever was going on. And as that was going on, the lights turning green because you go and then you turn, you can go left on Sylvan. That's where I would go to my house, Kessler Park. Um, but anyways, they hit us, and, like, we came to a stop, and they, it's not like they went ahead. They were just kind of, like, going slowly turned, you know, like, something's up. But I was like, well, go up. There. I remember being like, go up there. I'll take a picture of his license plate because he just hit him. And, like, he was going, and we are turning, and as I got my phone out, I got a picture of the actual car that it was. Oh, wow. And I took a picture of it. But as I'm doing that, I see this, like, little bitty boy pop out the little, he's like a little kid. I don't know, skinny-ass little dude that I would have killed if he didn't have a gun. But he would... Uh, he pulled out the side of like a, you know, the, the passenger side window. And I just remember like kind of coming up and I saw the, the flash of the gun. And it's like everything like slowed down, you know. If you don't believe in it was a higher power, I definitely believe it was like I felt that. It was like a, 
that happened and it's like I as I saw the flash I ducked to the left and as I'm ducking the bullet came through the windshield and went through my ear out my ear and hit the hardest part of my skull and bounced out and like um wow yeah so and basically when it happened like I mean my blood was because I'd been drinking a little bit maybe and just because it's on your head but I was bleeding everywhere it's like you know going yeah, everywhere head heads bleed bad. So it was bad so I mean we didn't I mean, especially a bullet uh, so did it I mean is that and I'm trying to figure out how bad that hurts. Like I really was in shock. I didn't feel it. anything. Didn't feel, like didn't feel anything. Nothing. 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 You I didn't feel, feel the, it till after the whole time. The, the whole night it happened. I didn't feel anything. The whole time. The whole time. What? Like my adrenaline was like crazy. I also, you know, took an Adderall or two before that. You know, like so maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. And um, I have no idea. But I mean, I remember when it happened. I immediately was like blood was going down everywhere, and I put my hand back there to kind of. Close the the wound. What did your friend do? Oh, he was screaming. <laughs> you know, like I love you, Chanson, but he, I mean, he handled it very well. But he was screaming. It's like I was the calm one. It was like tell him to you know call you know call the cops or whatever. He's like you're you're hit you're hit. Like I don't know I'm hit when the blood's coming out of me. But uh, he called the. Were man. you scared? No, I was so calm. So it's do really you know weird. If this was one shot or two shots? They sh- I they think just... they shot three shots. One of them went the one right when he went through the windshield. My friend Tanson went left and like swerved into the other side of the lane you know because it's two-way traffic and like you know so the other ones i think missed us but i heard three he said three too wow so you heard three to show us you have the bullet with you it's right here Is that right there that's the show. show show the camera right there where's your camera right there <laughs> wow that's been uh through this ear out this ear and then hit the hardest part of your skull so that i don't want to skip ahead but basically yeah let me let me give it to that a little bit right, uh, but uh right, go so uh when it happened i remember him calling the cops and I told him to just go to my house because we were like right by my house. I live on the golf course right there at Stevens Park. So it's Kessler Parkway. It's that first little turn. I'm right there. So I just remember telling him to go to my house. And wow, so you were like right there by your right house. Right by my house. I drive by it every day. Damn. Every oh my day. gosh. So now you still see that location. All oh, the all time. the time. Every day. Every day. And it's weird because like Oak Cliff, it's my hood. But you know, Kessler Park is kind of historic and we're coming the fuck up, by the way. Yeah. But um, you know, that is like Gentification. That's, I feel like you know, if you keep going to Oak Cliff down that road, it'll get pretty dark. And, you know, the they called it the, the what was it? Great White Flight. My grandparents used to live in there in the sixties. So and keep the, keep on keep on like, the track with yeah. the no chest. I want to just know so what ba- happened. So basically, like I just remember holding it back there and just you know like praying to God that like my, you know don't let me die. And like there was a huge like I remember thinking that my uh, skull had broken in half because like but what had happened it really pushed all this air in my neck and it was like hard. So like I was holding it back there and just thinking like, oh my god, just you know, get my hopefully my head will get back together or something, <sighs> because like but really like because I, I, I in my mind it's what it felt like. You could just feel this. It was so hard. It felt like my skull had split in half. But um, I guess we got to my house pretty quick from the time it happened. But I remember just trying not to faint, you know, or like you know not uh-huh. go not pass out and just kind of staying coherent, which I ended up doing. But um, I just remember he pulled right by my house, got out. And he opened the door, and I remember just whenever he was like, let me see it, man. And I opened up my hand, and I just remember, like, that old, whatever amount of time that was, was, like, the longest amount of time. Because I was going to know. I've known this guy my whole life. We grew up across the street from each other. I was going to know if I was going to be okay or not. And, like, that seemed like the longest time. But as soon as he was like, you're going to be okay. Like, I knew, like, okay, my God. You know, like, my heart just was, like, a lot better. I was, like, back to normal almost. So how fast did the ambulance come? To me, it felt like right when he said that, then the ambulance was there. And then yeah. that's when I, like, passed out and don't really remember too much. Other than, like, right when we got to the uh, hospital, which, by the way, I live by, right by the hospital. They used to call Kessler Park Pill Hill because all the, I guess all the, uh, what you call it, surgeons and all them from the hospital lived there. Oh. So I just remember, like, whenever I've been to a hospital before, you know, normally just all the doors kept open, like, pop, 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 like, soon, because it was a head wound. And, you know, they rushed me back there, and I just remember there was a bunch of people in there, and they were like, you're going to have to strip down. And I just got naked faster than, you know, didn't care. It was cold in there. You know, this is naked and just fix me. Don't let me die. And uh, I don't remember anything else from that till like the doctor, which he looked like he was like 25, by the way, or like super young. But I just remember he like came to me and then he was like, I got some good news or some great news. And I got a little bit of bad news. Which one do you want first? And uh, I just remember being like, no, oh, the great news or whatever. And he was like, oh, because he had actually shown me a pic- like a mirror first. So it's because I saw my ear. My ear was like hanging off the side of my head. <clears throat> 
Don't show her. She'll no. be, she'll faint. I have pictures of, that don't of show all of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you, you can show them. So actually, if I'll you, faint I, too. I said that oh, it didn't. I, I said it didn't oh, hurt, but that's actually when my ears started hurting like a motherfucker. Like when oh, I don't know if it was me seeing it and was like, oh shit, I'm not I'm not gonna be pretty anymore. You know, like my ears gonna. It was like literally half off, and uh, somehow, some way, I got. I, so he goes, what you want the good news or the bad news? The good news was that he said that an ear. He can put glue in there and it heals right back up. You won't even notice. What? Which? Oh look at my, my ear. Lord. What? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. I wouldn't Does even it hurt? know. I wouldn't, wouldn't even, know. even known. I mean, it's weird. Like I feel you don't feel have any. You don't feel it. Okay. But um, uh, so I remember him saying that, and I was like, oh, dude, if you can fix my ear, then I don't give a fuck. Like whatever the bad news is, it's not gonna really matter. And uh, but then he was like, but you have some uh, some I guess bullet fragments left in there, and we're gonna have to get them out. Uh huh. And it's gonna hurt. And I was like, okay, and, you know, I didn't really know what that meant but it seemed like he like showed me something that looked like a like a pencil you know with the, the old things you push out and it popped the little thing out i don't know but it was like a magnet and he stuck it in there and i just remember screaming really like and putting that in there to get there was like two little things that looked like a little like you know dot mm. but it was like i and guess that hurt oh my god yeah and, oh. but i didn't even know where he was putting it you know i didn't really i couldn't really see myself mm. yet i have pictures that they took or whatever but um I st- at, that, at that point i really didn't think it was that you know gonna ever hurt but it did a lot after I left the hospital. But they let me leave. I think the it wasn't the same night. But like the hardest part was calling my mom and telling her all this. I was just gonna ask you by far how <laughs> that yeah. was like the that's the only part I really remember is like how like I kind of got emotional because I was gonna have to call my mom because I had like I mean I've been through some shit out in Dallas and I was finally like where I wanted to be and you know she was proud of me and then I go out and this happens mm. you know so that was really what it was about and um yeah it was I don't I don't remember I remember Tanson bring it let me you know coming inside. And I used his phone to call my mom. So she was probably, what, what is Tanson calling me for? And then I had to tell her that. Oh. But, um. Was she, was your mom up, like, did your mom come up there very fast? Or did your That was, my mom, uh, so that was whenever they were releasing me. Um, and then, like, my mom, I don't know if she picked, I don't remember. I was kind of, like, in and out of it. Yeah. But I remember she, I think she did pick me up. Because I think she took me home. Yeah, she did. She took me home. And uh, that was like I just remember I really didn't cry, but like we she hung around for a long time, and then like when she left, like it hit me like I like cried, broke down and cried, and like I was like fucking close to dying Goodness, right there. Yes, yes, very close. Yeah, the doctor said that he'd never seen someone get shot like me and and, and make it. So, what? Yeah, he said that if it would have been like you know, so basically the hardest part of your skull is right behind your ear, and if he said if it was like I don't even know that much difference up or down, or if I wouldn't have ducked, it would have hit me right here probably. Uh, I would have definitely died. Oh my gosh, that's unbelievable! So, I mean, just, so yeah. did they catch them? No, not at all. I don't even think they looked. But I mean, that night there was like six shootings in what? Dallas. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, I, I have a little thing on there that they rode up. They said it was road rage. <laughs> you know, like it's not road rage. Like we didn't even know they were on the same road. But uh, basically, wow. I remember. I remember this. I remember there was two cops that kept coming in and out. And one of them was like playing good cop, and one was playing bad cop. Or like you're in trouble. Yeah, like why? Why would they just pull a gun on you? No, I swear. And I was like, dude. It, oh, and I said that the um, Tahoe that hit us was like blue or something, or maybe or gray, and it was one or the other. And he was like trying to, because then I showed him the picture. I was like, look, look at the picture. I was trying to, you know, figure out who it was or what the deal was. And he was like, well, you said it was gray. Why would you say it's gray when it's blue? Stop. I swear. I was oh like, dude, I just got the shot in the fucking head. Yeah. Like I'm trying to put it together. Yeah. yeah. So. Basically, that happened, and they set me up with this number of, because, uh, I mean, then, you know, I think they took my friend's Jeep into, um, which, uh, what do they do? Impounded. Take, impounded, and then, like, investigate it. And, like, he got it back, and then texted me, and he's like, dude, look what I found. It's a picture of the bullet, which is right here. You know, oh. like, that's the show. So, I mean, oh, wow. they did a great job looking for the bullet. Wow. Oh, like, they so didn't they didn't really do shit. Right? No, and then no. that's whenever, I, like, no, I remember the, like, girl that called me that was the detective on my case. And I was just like, well, did my pictures help? Like, you know, I was like describing them and they're like, well, you know, just excuses. And, you know, at the time, like I had a lot of people reaching out to me, you know, telling me that they, you know, they can find out and they'll find out, you know, just people that aren't good to. Yeah. Not even like young people, older people. So, I mean, there was, that was something I struggled with a long time is like, do I really want to go kill this guy or something? You know, like cause it, I did it for the time period. Just the fact that he could just do something like that. He don't know if I'm dead or alive. He, just, right. he saw it go right through the windshield. Wow. And so what and there was, was your a kid? It was a little yeah. kid. I mean, yeah, like I mean, it I would if I had to guess for sure, I would say 15. That's wow. what I would guess. So the gang initiation thing sounds that that I, would be I, right. I think so too. That's actually yeah. happened you, to a friend of mine, Joe Vega. 
That's right. Because yeah. Joe Vegas has been and shot. His girl too. Got yeah, shot. remember? They were driving, oh. just driving randomly on 35. Yeah. And they just got shot. Him so, and his girl. Had- do you, do you have, have you ever heard of like whenever you see a car without their uh, headlights yes. on, you and flash and they yeah. come back and that, that yeah. used to be it. The now urban legend, now yeah. this is it. And what they'll do is if you're like, if they do that and hit you, they're looking to see if you're like, a, if you're two young girls, they'll take you into sex trafficking. Uh, I was it, I was about to ask why would it matter if it was girls so, or like you. or in like guys that aren't like aggressive but I was real aggressive when they did that I like threw my hands up you know and I was like what's up you know I just remember seeing him like looking through like trying to I see those eyes all the time Ugh. like guys and I know what that guy looks like for sure I was gonna ask you how emotionally like that was the hardest part like I mean the <laughs> physical stuff it hurt like a motherfucker like for like two weeks but I just I mean I had some stuff I just went through I don't even remember but um. Yeah, I, I mean, because I was all bandaged up, and it's like, oh, and I had an equilibrium thing where I couldn't stand up oh, really. Oh, you know, yeah. like where I like really wasn't walking. But at that time, we just sold our business, and I was trying to like also like help them, to, and I didn't want this new owner to think that I wasn't working. So I'd, I remember going to work and like, you know, just laying under my desk and stuff like. So how so, did you feel emotionally? Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so uh, physically, all it did was it I ripped mean, my ear like a big hole in it, but they oh. filled it with glue. So like it like glued itself back together. Your ears and I think your lips. This must have been a like a twenty two maybe or I don't know. Like I was thinking a thirty eight, but I have no idea. It's it looks small. It's small. Isn't a thirty eight smaller than a nine millimeter or no? I'm not sure. I think it might be the one smaller than a nine mil it's it's a small one. But if it was any bigger, like if that was a three eighty, you mean? Three eighty. That's what I mean. Might be I have no I'm not smaller. a gun guy. <laughs> but uh I think this is like this if it was bigger, I mean I would have got, you know, definitely would have died. But it, it was, it's wow. kind of, it, it, emotionally. you don't even look like anything. No, no you would never, you would never you tell. You would never tell. know anything never happened tell. to you. There's a little scar, like, behind my, my ear, but, you know. Wow. So, I wish it was, so I wish it was cooler. So, I wish I had, like, a, you know, a little, like, a bigger so scar. physically, that's all that happened. Physically, yeah. And, yeah. um. Now going to your mental. Well, just, like, emotionally. Oh, how was it that? fucked me up bad. It did. Oh, yeah, for a long time, and really, like. Like, how? Just, uh, anxiety. And uh, anytime someone would like pull up beside me that had a Tahoe or uh, I'm sure you know or anytime PTSD out, I would just like you know just I was scared and also like, any you know I remember at New Year's this happened in November and then there was New Year's I, I remember watching TV and I, I have a basement in my house so I'm like down below so I didn't even hear it but I heard like I thought it was fire fireworks going off oh, but I thought it was a gun and it just like course. freaked but me over out. there I mean there is it a lot of yeah there is shots, there's a lot of gunshots like, during Fourth of July and New Year's could have been a gunshot I, mean, I don't know could have been. But I just remember, like, having kind of a little bit of a, like, like scared to, yeah, you know. Yeah, PTSD for big sure. Time, big time. And I, and I had that for the longest, just started to, like, kind of, a lot, I have a lot of PTSD. But I had a lot from that for probably over a year until, I, like, I mean, honestly, until I did it, I had a really bad LSD trip. And that, like, got me out of it. No way. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. You had a bad LSD trip that oh, got yeah. you out? Yeah. So, like, that what I. Sounds like a good. It's trip. a great thing that I did it, but like during it, oh my God, it's like the worst thing I've ever so experienced. So you were like facing your demons. I was facing my demons, stuff. yeah. And yeah. I wasn't, and that's what I think you psych- ready psychedelics kind of do to you. Isn't that like when the ayahuasca yeah, thing? Ayahuasca. Right? I had a, like something very similar to that. Yeah. But I took like, I mean, we didn't. I mean, it opens up your third eye. And it was then, definitely like I was on another dimension. What stuff, are you guys so, talking yeah. about? Yeah. Well, you've heard, you know, Chris, you did ayahuasca, right? No, I didn't. Oh. The, uh, the shaman said I wasn't ready. I went to go do it, and the shaman said, Really? Yeah. I got a couple of friends that have done it, and what they've experienced, or what they said, that's feel like what I got to, like, a. there's different energies that, that we all live through, and, yeah. like, I feel like that, if you take ayahuasca, or, I mean, L, that, I've taken LSD many times before that, but it was never like what I experienced there. So what did you and experience? And plus, when you take it, and you're in a, in a different mindset, and you have this, like, traumatic experience, and right. you take it... And especially, I don't know if you took it for fun or if you were taking it to, to try to, you know, face these demons. I wasn't taking it to try to face them, but, like, I mean, LSD, I knew, I know what LSD is. And, like, whenever you take LSD, you're basically seeing your self-conscious. And, like, if that's good or if that's bad, you're going to see it. And, I mean, LSD, I've had the greatest moments in my life. <laughs> I mean, trust me, it's amazing. But it's like your mind sees and it, it connects us all. It shows you where the energies in the world are. I mean, I don't want to get too much into LSD, but. I had a horrible experience where basically I had to, like, I died three times. The whole night I was basically, it was a, you know, do you want to sell your soul to the devil or do you want to, you know, just die? And I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be bad and sell my soul. I don't know. It's like a, it's kind of hard to, very hard to explain. It's an internal It's an internal war, battle that I have, like, battle. you know, that I know that getting through it, like, I'm a better person. And, like, the next day I was, like, the most calm I've ever been. 
but I mean, oh really? Wow. Oh yeah. I mean, it, the, during it though, like I mean, ask my friends. It was they thought that I might not never be the same. It's like, it was bad. Do I mean, you remember how much you took? That's the thing. My friend made it. So oh, so you. Just, so my friend lived in Yosemite, like, and like he shipped it to us, and we we had all done it many many times before. But me and a couple of guys, it you're was, just dosing. And I just, yeah, we mean, I took weight. I think it was just more mental. It was all where I'm at in, in life. You You're know, like, like, fuck it. I don't care. It, the, going into it, I did not expect. I mean, I don't think I even took that much more than I normally do. It's just where you're at as a, in a mental state. But did you take it for fun or were you just. Yeah, probably. That's what I took it for, for fun. fun. And then it just. And then it kind of profound. Oh, you see the added. darkness. It comes to you. And like at that. And I just. I had to, I had to battle that. And I had to have a lot of other demons that, you know, maybe they got me through. But. I n- I'll never take it again. I know that. Mm-hmm. Like, and then you feel like your anxiety got better. I, it has a whole lot better, and uh, only getting continuing to get better. And I don't, really? I don't recommend people just go do LSD. It's some serious ass shit. But yeah, it will like change you. It's like if you have problem. You know, I have another friend that was a heroin addict that went and did a you know ayahuasca trip, and basically he then after that was completely never done heroin again. Now he helps and helps people get on these ayahuasca trips. So I do believe in like uh, psychedelics. Yeah, wow. me too. I mean, I've I've tripped acid, mushroom, mushroom, yeah, microdosed. I mean, I'm I'm. I think microdosing is like healthy. I don't I, do it, but it is, especially yeah. if you do it yeah, with do with the uh, with the uh, conscious mind. You know, I it mean, it clears your like frontal it's, lobe. It's something to do it for fun, and you trip out. That's one thing, but then another thing to do it for like a um, medication. You yeah, know, they it's, say it helps anxiety. It's, it's definitely definitely. Um, I have a a client and she's um she's an attorney she's a divorce attorney and um she was taking all these uh medications for her depression and it was fucking up her liver because there was so many medications she went to a holistic doctor that prescribed her these psilocybins which is what contains the mushrooms mushrooms. and uh, it wasn't just psilocybins but it was a con con concoction with that and she is now completely 100 percent off all her medications all her you know pharmaceutical medications she doesn't feel depressed anymore she feels better and uh, she doesn't even do the mushrooms anymore because she's she's weaned herself off of it yeah so i have heard that in a and it's all controlled setting natural i mean when you, when you say drugs like what is drugs i mean this is a a natural plant that you just eat Drugs are like pharmaceuticals where they're like, you know, different kind of synthetic. And we have like receptors in our brains for two things. And that's marijuana and, uh, and, and uh, mushrooms. Those are two things that our bodies are like, they, our brains recept and like. Which are both completely both natural. Grow with, if we're here, I mean, if we take it or not, it's going to be there. It grows from the ground. And then the ayahuasca is an herb, correct? Yeah. Ayahuasca it's like a tea. Is a Jaguars tea. like uh, will eat the ayahuasca plant and lay back and like trip the fuck out. You Animals? That. Jaguars. Oh, just jaguars. Yeah, I mean, oh. it's jaguars. But YouTube, that's really cool. I don't know. Maybe other animals do it too, but I don't jaguars do it. <laughs> Why does Ayahuasca is a root, and it's a, it's a, it's a plant, and yeah. it's a mixture of. And the shaman like sits concoction. with you, and like they play these drums right they like yeah, yeah it's yeah, a yeah. whole ceremony yeah, it's a ceremony. You have to like i mean if you it's a religious like, experience a, like uh it's a religious show. experience it is. yeah you have to have someone i mean she the ones that I, I have two friends that do it and they go every year now and they went through something like i went through so, wow i mean it, it helped but during it scared i mean the scariest thing i've ever seen and been through for oh sure my gosh and I don't know, to be that close to dying. Yeah, and that's what it was insane. about. I think that when I, I mean, I, in my mind, I, I died. Like, I knew what it was like to, like, I remember my mind just said, like, tell my mom I'm sorry. That was, like, one of the last things I said. Oh. And then, like, I come out of it. And then wow. I feel it. Like, yeah. And, and, and so I was thinking, I'm, like, having, and I saw, and I still have these dreams of, like, me talking to my friends that told me that I was just laying over there drooling on myself, like, you know, like, basically, like, but in my mind, I was having these conversations with them. You know, about me dying and me, ta- you know, basically it was about, you know, do I want to sold my soul to the devil and live or do I want to just die? And I was just like, fuck it, I'll just die. I'm not going to. It's kind of hard to explain, but that's really what the basis of it was. Wow. And then what? <laughs> and then so that's that's how I got over the LSD. The, the LSD. LSD. <laughs> the, well, the, I did. Cause I'm not, yeah, the anxiety yeah. and the PTSD, which I had big time. I, I'm, I've you, never been like so like scared after I got shot, I guess, or like, you know, didn't want drama or, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of felt that, and you know, mental health is something that I really never 
you know, one of my best friends committed suicide, and that's something we can get into later, but um, basically, I never really kind of felt like I understood that until that happened, and then I definitely was kind really? of... Really? Oh, yeah, where I, I didn't want to go certain places, and there's too many people here, you know? And right. I never thought that before. It's really high anxiety. High anxiety, big time. Big, big time. Yeah. Just oh, scared wow. of, like, well, you never know what the fuck's going to happen. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean I've been in way, imagine. like, I've been in places where there were shootouts and stuff like that, and I don't even know what I was thinking then. It seemed like it was nothing, but... Actually, when get, it happens to you. When it happens to you. It's like yeah. a wake up like that. It felt like it was almost like a God or higher power talking to me. Like, hey, this is, you know, I'm here for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, stop fucking about. Yeah, kind I of. mean, that's wow. true. That's true. Your your time wasn't yeah. here yet, and now you're here. Now you gotta do some shit. You yeah, know? I gotta actually do some shit. <laughs> yeah, that's mm-hmm. what, that's kind of how it felt. And 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 you are. Yeah, yeah. So tell us and what you you're about so, yeah, to do let's talk about that. <laughs> well, I mean, that kind of led. Yeah, honestly, that is kind of what led that to that um or to this that we're doing but um at the time when i got shot we had just sold my family business that would been that's been my whole life you know i was the third generation and what, what was, was it called that? swafford electric supply that's electric this. supply that's yes. right but a boosh swafford nice. electric supply. i had it tattooed all over me too like ses oh. which i now have learned that like going into prison that would be a gang thing but <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't go into I won't go into prison. but um we had just had our like 50th anniversary so I mean we wow were, yeah we sold on our 50 we had been open 51 years it's a family owned where either my grandparents owned it and this is where electricians go and buy their shit or? exactly yes okay. and we so were buy, like wires and like yep everything you would need to you know wires plugs everything electrical like build a house put yep. a bathroom together whatever mm-hmm. you need mm-hmm. hair salon it's builders and we we're I mean we we're open you know 51 years I think when we sold finally but uh, this had just happened. This happened probably like four months after we had sold. So I went from being the vice president of a small business to now a salesman for this huge corporation because I had I signed a ten-year non-compete. Or actually, I didn't sign a non-compete. By the way, <laughs> but uh, that, <laughs> that's coming up later. Um, so uh, basically, I'm working for Wholesale Electric, and I just—I mean, I think I was kind of trying to figure out who I was. I just got bought a dr- my dream house mm-hmm. out in Dallas, and because we had sold, and I finally had the, all this money, or what I thought was all this money. And I think I was like really kind of confused on what I was going to do with my life. Like, mm-hmm. you know, because my whole You've life. You've done I'm, this all your life. Exactly. Now. If I wasn't going to be in a professional baseball player, I was going to work at Swafford Electric Supply. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's what it was. That's all. I've had one other job and it was Hollister. And that was, oh, just, and that, was that was just, uh, you know, steal clothes from my yeah. friends, basically. <laughs> but so, I mean, that's all I ever knew. And seeing them take down the signs and stuff, I think I was kind of depressed and I didn't know it at the time. And I was turning 33 and I should be happy out here in Dallas, and I think that all kind of, like, came to, like, you know, it all happened at the same time, but from from that, getting shot, um, I kind of started, uh, I knew that I had to do something. I wasn't going to be happy working for Wholesale Electric. So basically, I just kind of been taking their check, and me and my dad started a, a new company called Swafford Dream Homes. Okay. Okay, and we mm-hmm. bought um, these properties by, right, it, they back, basically back up to Trinity Groves, so they're right by all the bars, and then you have the down, best downtown view ever. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's in uh, this old, the oldest Mexican or Spanish um, neighborhood ever, or in Dallas. But right. So we bought these for cheap, and we've been sitting on them, and I still haven't done nothing on them. But those were my first ones. I was just thinking I was going to get into real estate. Yeah, and back then they were like twenty grand. You don't even know, man. They're so cheap as fuck. Yeah, we're coming up on these things. Trust me. Yeah. And um, so I mean, that was the first. Still didn't know what I was going to do, but I had some money and thought I was going to do that. But then my friend Travis, who's an artist, not Travis. Not I, Travis. Not Travis. That's my boy. <laughs> he's, the, he's the man. And um, I knew I wanted to invest in something with him just because, like, I love him and we've been friends forever. And I've seen how successful he is. So very I, smart, too. Very like, smart. Really just, smart. I mean, guy. greatest. Out of all my, you know, I, me and him are, we, we were like the same. He was soul. in real estate, too, he was. before all yeah. that. So. Yeah, he was. Um, and I've just known. I mean, you, you, when you meet someone, you know, like, all right, this guy's a good, a good soul right here. And I, I knew that about him. So, like, even this was before he had blown up in the art world, you know. So I, I just knew that I was going to want to be a part of something. And he was doing his thing at the whatever gallery. I'm not going to say their name. But uh, he was under contract. So that really wasn't what I was thinking we were going to do. I thought we were going to do more of the clothing stuff. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I started thinking about, well, what if we, you know, did our own art gallery? And fucking put this thing on, and, and we're you know he, he was already doing him and Buddy Love, our other partner. They already had a thing going on called the psychedelic robot that they were putting on at the Crescent Hotel, and it was real successful. They were killing it. Very what successful. Is, yeah. What is that? It's like um, it was like an art experience that they were putting on, 
and uh, you buy tickets and you could go oh, see okay. it. Like, it's like a uh, an exhibit, but you it's um where you actually like do stuff with it. What do you call it? Where it's um. I don't know because I, I didn't immersive is that it i don't know what that means but i know they use that word a lot immersive is uh, it, it was like uh kind of like the perot museum where you actually yeah. like, it's um, like you can you're involved in yeah it. you can okay. like play right. with it like yeah and things. i mean i saw how successful it was and i was just like Man, what if what if i, I was bought at the it. crescent hotel too. It, was, it was yeah it was it was, it was nice. nice yeah i mean they were bun b performed at it you know <laughs> ugk all day um so I, that's kind of, I just, I don't know if I, who came up with the idea, but basically I, we we're like, let's buy a building and start our own thing. If we can get Travis out of his contract. And that's where our other partner came in, you know, which is Travis's manager. He's my boy, Kyle Sauter. There's four of us. There's me, Travis, Buddy Love, shopbuddylove.com, and not Travis. And we started Gallery DeFi, which okay. is. What Deb and them were talking about. Right. What yeah. Deb and them were well, talking about. Nobody and which uh, now Deb and Manny are part of Gallery saying, DeFi. Yeah. Okay. So like that's another extra thing, but th they came later. They they came recently, but I've, they're still a part. They're they're family. But we started off us four. We're, okay. we're we're the ones that own the Gallery DeFi. Got it. And um, basically from there we started looking for buildings um, to to open up our own, do something like psychedelic robot, but way better, way better. And uh, that was the plan. So from there we bought this, or I found this building in Sylvan Thirty is what the district's called. Because my, my neighbor had let me in on some information that that's where they were moving the arts district. And there's a lot of galleries opening up over there right now. Okay. Wow. Like all the arts. So another thing that I can, I'll just say it because I don't care. It's on, uh, it's, on, it's on the website anyways. But they're moving, like they're building a, a Dallas art school right there. And um, all the, you ever seen like uh, the fabrication yard where all the graffiti is at? So that's yeah. like, yeah. that's called the Tin Roof District. All those yeah. are going to be like art studios, art, you know, like personal art studios. Yeah. So that whole area, and that's where we're at, right on the other side of the tracks. I know exactly where that is. So that's like all artists, all, have a all the murals. You're going to have the most murals you've ever seen all right there. They have the after hours part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I bought this, you know, I think it's about 19,000 square foot uh, built uh, building. And um, I guess that was almost a year ago now. <clears throat> so when, that's what we had planned and we're still working on and turning that into Gallery DeFi, which will be like, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I try to like stay out of the art stuff just because they're so good at what they do. And like, I just don't want to, you know, fuck it up. Uh, and what, so it's Gallery DeFi. What is House of DeFi? House of DeFi is where Deb and Manny are coming in. And oh, um, okay, that's okay. so one's going to be art and one's going to be clothes. And they're going to go together because NFTs, you can do both. Right. I mean, clothes can be art. Look at this thing. Come on. <laughs> yeah. ODB from 95. What is that shirt? Yeah, I know, exactly. Old uh, Dirty old Bastard dirty is dirty from Wu Tang Clan, <laughs> and that's his license. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a weird kind of a. I like kind of fashion stuff like right. that. Right. So that's kind of where Deb and Manny is a, a killer in these NFTs, and the, I don't know anything about all that, but I know that's kind of you know I know that it's going somewhere. So yeah. basically, I'm, we bought some land right next to it, and we're gonna build up and. Oh, I see. It'll be okay. kind of they'll go, but their their podcast I can say it. It's going to be inside of the Gallery DeFi. Oh, wow. And so oh, you're going to have a studio. We're going to have a studio kind of cool. like this. Nice. Oops. And you're going to see the studio behind it. Oh, very cool. Yeah, and that's, that's all, that. hopefully that'll be open in three months. Oh, that's, wow. Yeah, all, everything will be open. Gallery DeFi and that. Nice. Wow, so that's moving quick. Oh, and yeah. can moving people quick. buy the art or is it just more yes. the experience? No, you can buy every single thing in there. So we'll have like a little thing scan and then tell you about the artist and oh very cool so now uh give us a little bit about this uh gallery DeFi. is this a gallery where it's just going to be travis or is this where y'all rent asset. space or is this no we have all the space we own that space but is it where you're going to rent space to other artists to actually oh, okay. do their projects or is this like a gallery where you just already do travis, the products yeah. and then you just you know display it i mean it's um so Trav I'd let Travis do whatever he wants because yeah. Travis is a genius. But basically, from my understanding, is he has we have select artists that are going to be in there. I mean, okay. it's you know it's very you know he doesn't want. I know that he doesn't want every you know artist. Right. No, no offense to whoever, keep doing your art. Yeah, well, I mean you got to be. Selective. And it's not just here. We have partners in LA that we're going to put on something for six months, and it'll be there for six months. But is this like a gallery, oh, wow. or is this somewhere where artists Both. can go and actually? do their thing and, oh. and paint and have you know, no. like a it'll be it's like um we'll have ticketed events for like it'll be like a experience kind of like i got a burp hold on it's coming <laughs> it's all that champagne that i, I made you drink i know okay. <laughs> okay i got it on me um i i really feel like i can't talk that much about it because i really just try to stay out of it and like try right. to do his yeah. thing but like i do know that 
every artist that we do, I know that one of them is named, his name's Trey Wilder because that's my boy. And um, there you are starting on the mural. Our first mural will be on our building. Oh, very wow. cool. Next week. We got some, we got some cele- you know, celebrities or big names that are going to be a part of this. You know, I, we, we're, we, it seems like it's real quick, but this has been in the works for about two years. Right. right. It so all happens really fast at the end. Right now it's mm-hmm. all, because I mean, yeah. we're about three months from finishing, but, you know, really it's, you that's know, when it we're just now signing artists, getting everything, you know, programmed, but it's all coming real quick. And then you're going to have a grand opening. I believe we're going to have some kind of like a music drop as a grand opening. Somebody's going to perform. We're also going to, it's going to be like an event center as well. I mean, there's going to be a stage and all, all sorts of stuff that you've never seen before. One of ones that we've lined up that'll be the first time you've ever been able to see something like that. Oh, wow. wow. So, I mean, I don't want to talk to about it too much. Yeah, but yeah. I definitely know, you know. And has some, this been really fun for you? Like, do you feel like. Yeah, this is like, I mean, I kind of feel like this is what I'm supposed to do right now. Yeah. You know, like almost like this is why That's I'm still awesome. alive. And like, you know, I'm, yeah. I don't know anything about nothing, but I know a lot of people that are good at stuff and I can just, hey, you should do this and you should do this. And that's kind of how it all kind of comes together. That's very cool. Thanks. I'm so nice. happy that you're part of something that you're excited about. And that, I'm excited about I it. I mean, that's yeah. very, very cool. I really don't have anything like whatever you see out there. I'm not doing any of that. That's all, the, you know, artists and all well, that. You're putting yeah, you it together. To. I mean, you, yeah. You're the means of putting everything together. Yeah. Kind of, yes. Kind yeah. of. Kind of. For I sure. Mean, you're like the chairman. In the, in the, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm trying to be the Dame Dad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. That's awesome. But um, I think that also we're going to. This is only going to be like a, so the gallery D5, from my understanding, they might change this, and guys, please don't hate me if I fuck this up, but I think that like, it'll be like a, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing, where you buy a ticket for a certain amount of time, and that's what you, takes you through this experience of the gallery D5, but then at all times, maybe, I'm not sure, because our office, it's kind of a two thing building this, now one, it's like a real long, big warehouse, but it kind of splits with this big brick wall. And then that, our offices that we are working in and Travis's studio is all kind of blended in with the art gallery. Got it. So, like, at that t- that's really, like, the gallery where you can buy, like, you know, merch and, uh, you know, actual artist stuff that's whoever's going to be on display. We have, I mean, uh, I can say one person because I know that we got him under, is, uh, under contract, that is. is it, Strokers Dallas, there's this guy. It's, like, a famous. My dad was really good friends with him. Um, or is still good. They were really good friends. These would be running mates. But he's, like, in the biker world. And yeah. Mr. Fearless is like the man. Yeah, Strokers yeah, we is. We, yeah, we met him. <laughs> yeah. You know him? Okay. F- yeah. Nah. So, like, they, him and my dad used to hang around, you know, back in the day when they were wild. And um, you know, I knew, I know his daughter, and we were going to do some stuff with, you know, he's going to make a motorcycle there. It's going to be kind of an immersive. Oh, how kind cool. Of stuff. Yeah, it's going to be real cool. I mean, Strokers That's is a big name here in Dallas oh, yeah, for yeah. the motorcycle community. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. And I think they're going to do some kind of bike run for charity from there to here, you know, I mean, do stuff like that. Guess that's the big name for oh, yeah. Dallas, definitely. Big name. He's like a, I mean, in the biker world, he's like a yeah. Willie yeah. Nelson or something. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> you know, like Jesse James, like, you know, gives him like a lot of credit. Yeah, for I mean, he, don't they even have like a huge like event? Oh, yeah, they have. I mean, they have them a, at Strokers. Their place at Strokers is amazing. Like, I'm yeah. trying to model my shit off to his where you buy a bunch of land all around each other and then just do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You want to see some art, go to that place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went there yeah, one we time after podcast. <laughs> yeah. Or in the middle when we would do we breaks. Had a break. Yeah. <laughs> we went there. I'd never been there before. So I've cool. never been there either, yeah. but I've, I've heard a lot about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, if it's you want a tour, cool. I can get you a tour. It'll take you. Yeah. You can see some stuff it's, that's so amazing. It's so cool. Yeah. It's just stuff that you really like. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do you know i like art obviously i have it all over me but i don't like, i don't really know anything about it you know i just uh have i guess i want to do some stuff that i like that's awesome i mean what's better than that and especially surviving what a crazy uh, story man. i know mm-hmm. yeah and now you get to do what and you now, love like, do, you, do you feel like a different person now do you feel like you've you, now you have definitely di- i feel like different than I, I mean i've been like five different people in my life i feel like yeah you know, like, but more, now you have amy you know get ah you get like nine lives. Yeah, I, I mean, I d- I've definitely, I've, well, I felt like my grandma used to tell me that she went to a tarot card reading one time. She had my three, my two brothers and I have a cousin, and we were all alive when she told me this, and I'm, since then I've always felt this way. But she was like, when she went to a tarot card reading, just she never was like that. But mm-hmm. you know why? You know, and then she went and did it, and the, and the tarot card, or what do you call that person? I don't know what you, that lady <laughs> told her that she had a, a golden grandson and that he was meant to do special things in life. And she said that she knew right when she said that it was it's me. It's you. And like I was like, and from there I was like, okay, uh, you know, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta live up awesome. to it, man. Yeah. yeah. So like, I mean, I guess I just lived the, the perfect childhood where 
all my you know my parents were together and they both loved me so much and my grandparents loved me and they told me I was the most handsome and the best ever and I believed it. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Hey, Trey, we got a little late start today, so I'm sorry, I, I talk. You gotta you can cut me off. No, to that we just have like a few more minutes left. So tell us like. Something else totally about Trey Swafford that everybody needs to know. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I would say that I lived the, the best life ever up until about, you know, 24 years old. My, my best friend, my brother who lived with me, he killed himself. And um, that was around the time I was starting to hang out with Marcella and those. <laughs> you the king your brother, your real brother? or like No, nah, he grew up across brother, the street like, from me, okay. but his parents, I mean, I mean, yeah. they, he lived his last, you know, like 18, you. you know, a couple of years at my parents' house or... He seemed like it. he was always over there. He lived there when I didn't live there. So, I mean, and he'd, he'd uh, yeah, he committed suicide and mental health issues, but, which I never understood. There's actually a play. His sister's doing a play. She, she does the Dallas, I think, Museum, or what is that? I don't know, but it's actually, in the, it's not really the opener yet, but that's this next weekend coming up. Really? It's called Boy on a Billboard, because he stripped down naked and got up on a billboard in Fort Worth, shut down all of Fort Worth, and I actually was called to go down there and try to talk him off of it. Shut down, the entire down Fort Worth. We were... About like twenty three years old. Oh wow. my goodness! Yeah, he used to be at Pete's Piano Bar. His name's James Apple. Stop! Oh wow! He was yeah. a piano player. Oh, he was the best. I mean, he was he was oh. signed for like in out of uh, right out of high school. He went to Nashville. I mean, they, his his family owns you still own Dallas Sound Lab, and now it's called something else. Oh my goodness! Wow, I've 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 but I mean, he was, with that. I grew up. I mean, we were brothers, and he, I just thought everyone, you know. Had a f best friend that could play every instrument. No matter <laughs> what. I didn't realize how talented he was, but yeah, he committed suicide on his 24th birthday. So like, that's really oh, weird yeah. to me how it happened on my birthday. Mm. You know, and I think that I that's uh, something that definitely you know I'd never done drugs in my life. You know, I was always an athlete, didn't touch that stuff. And that night that he you know did that, I went out and I did Molly and cocaine. No. Yeah, and it's like I started hanging out with the wrong people, and you know, came in this kind of drug gang life. For really, a little bit. because of that. Oh, yeah, I was pissed off at the world. Big wow. Time. I was really mad. Lived a, about four years of my life just, like, really angry, I think. And then I think I was kind of getting over it finally where I was like, okay, I can go back and live in Dallas now. And then that happens. I was like, you know, I don't know. what We sold our company. That, and it just kind of came out of nowhere. But it's right. almost like it all kind of blend, you know, happened together. They all go together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's something. That is. Yeah. Mm. What a story. Dang. I know, yeah. Trey. I know, right? Uh, I mean, there's still so much more to Trey. I feel like we have to have him back because he told me some things yesterday, but I'm like, wow. We yeah, need those to are about, know those all about that. my family, right? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, cool stuff about he has a, a mob connection and all kinds of, wow. I mean, unbelievable stories. So we need to book you back for the show yeah. for, for part sure. two. I'm down. Please. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be less nervous next time. Exactly. See, it was not <laughs> bad, bad, right? No, that would be great. We'll have to do some stretches, though. <laughs> we'll smoke another blunt. Let's do it. I got some. We got some. <laughs> well, uh, everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you so much. And thank you, Trey, for coming Trey, on the show. What's your Instagram? It's my name, Trey Swafford. Well, spell <laughs> it. T R E Y. And then there's like a little, little thing underneath. Underscore. Underscore. S W O F F O R D. Perfect. Trey Swafford. Trey Swafford. That's it. Check Thank them out. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you.